I hate doing front flips almost as much as I hate doing sales. I promise I'll bring this full circle. So way back in the day, tiny Jenny was a competitive cheerleader. Not like the cheerleaders you see at football games. I mean, I did that too. But there's this whole other sport that combines like gymnastics and tumbling and dancing and throwing people up in the air and catching them. That's competitive cheerleading. I mean, it's nuts. We got people flying 20 feet in the air, doing backflips while they're up there. People are flipping over fires, big Jojo Siwa bows in your hair. Okay, maybe not, it's not that dramatic, but we do have big bows on the top of our heads. So one day, when I was 14, this really big, important coach for a really popular, like highly competitive, advanced cheerleading gym was just scouting out some girls. I put on my best show. We were warming up all of our tumbling, so I was throwing my best tumbling passes. My back handsprings, my back flips, the back flips where you keep your whole body and your legs straight. I was doing everything I could to look like I knew what I was doing. But when it came to front tumbling, that's when I had trouble. For some reason, I had some mental block of throwing myself forwards. I'd throw myself backwards multiple times in a row, but when I had to throw myself forwards, I just couldn't do it. But this day, for whatever reason, I was feeling extra confident, probably because the coach was there. So I tried to do my best front flip. I ran down the mat and I took a leap and I flipped and landed straight on my back, <laughs> flat on my back. I did it two more times thinking that I could nail it. Didn't happen. I was crushed. There's no way I was gonna get picked up for this advanced team if I couldn't do something as simple as a front flip. So after the coach left and little 14 year old me was like holding back tears, one of my friends came over to me and she was like, you know why you're not like landing the front flip, right? And I was like, no, I'm doing everything right. And she's like, no, you're not jumping high enough in the beginning. You're only focusing on flipping forward. So I tried it and sure enough, I landed it. And it was way easier than I thought it was. Was that really all that I was missing? I was just jumping higher in the air before I flipped? And why the heck didn't she tell me that 15 minutes earlier? So why couldn't I figure this out on my own? Why couldn't I say, I'm not landing these. Obviously I need to jump higher. We all think we can solve our own problems, but very rarely does that actually happen because you don't know what you don't know. There's no way to pull out of your brain something that's not there in the first place. And sometimes all you need is one tiny recommendation from somebody else who sees what you're trying to do. And over the last few years, we've learned that in business, it's the same exact thing. You don't exactly know what's missing. You just know that it doesn't work. You need to find somebody who can give you very, specific prescribed advice to make big gains. So how do you find somebody like that? And then once you do, how do you know that you can trust their advice? What happens when you're talking to multiple people for advice, asking the same questions and getting different answers? That's the topic of today's episode of Maker's Money. When is a time that you've been mentored? Before we get into the video, is that something that has ever happened to you? I would love if you could share your experiences. I'm sure everybody down in the comments would love to hear your experience. Mentorship is a crazy awesome thing that humans can do sometimes where being willing to learn from somebody else and having somebody who's willing to share with you, it's a really cool relationship to have. So uh, really curious to hear your stories down in the comments. There's a TV show on CNBC that Jenny and I really like to watch in our free time. I think it's on Hulu if you don't have cable. It's called The Profit. This guy Marcus goes into these family owned small businesses and finds out what their problems are. They usually reach out to the show because you know they're in a large amount of debt and they need help getting their business started. And so he comes in, saves the day. He pays off all their debt. He shows them what they're doing wrong. He sets them up with a few good opportunities with his other businesses that he owns a stake in and Nine times out of 10, it works out really well for the business. So long as the business owners are coachable and open to change, which that's a whole other video, they usually go from a failing business to a really successful one in just a matter of months. Very rarely are the businesses just inherently bad. They're usually missing one or two elements of what makes a successful business work, either you know marketing or sales, or sometimes there's a toxic person in the office. They usually just struggle with one thing. And when this guy Marcus comes in and points out what that one thing is, 
business, they get rid of it, and the business starts working again. Watching this show is great for us because we can learn from these other business owners' mistakes. Yes, I know it's a pseudo-scripted reality show, but 95% of the time, we recognize that if this person had had a mentor or a coach somewhere along the way of them starting their business, they wouldn't have gotten themselves into so much trouble. So we like to reverse engineer their lessons and start to implement them in our own business before we get into a lot of trouble. In business, you have to think differently. You have to think like a business owner, not like a consumer. It takes a lot of time to learn the new information. You have to overwrite old rules that you thought about business and price and structure and sales and all this other stuff. And you start to realize that people don't so much care about price as much as they say they do. That's just an excuse. Like there's all these like rules you have to learn of being a business owner. Otherwise, you're never going to get anywhere. And if you spend too much time with consumers and people who don't run businesses, you start to unlearn some of those business lessons. Your blade gets dull, if you will. But on the other hand, if you spend your time around other business owners and people selling products to consumers, iron sharpens iron. You're going to get sharper. You're going to get smarter. You're going to learn lessons. You're going to be more coachable. You're going to, uh, you know, think that, hey, the next step isn't as scary as I think it is. You can also have a trusted group of people where if you really do have a problem, you can bring it to them and they're not going to take advantage of you. They're going to help you succeed. I mean, they won't do the work for you, but they'll point you in the right direction and let you know what you're missing, which nine times out of 10 is all you need to get started and to fix your own business. <laughs> do you find people like that? Great question. You need to find people who are doing what you want to do. Not your mom, not your uncle, and definitely not your customer. You need to be taking business advice from another business person and preferably from somebody who's several steps ahead of you. So if you're like me, you might be scared that that other person might interpret your request as like, I'm your competition and I want to be better than you. But that's not usually the case. Most times people who start a business also just want to help people. Business owners who are willing to help can be found if you're willing to do some looking. And we're going to give you two places to look. So one great place to look is your local Chamber of Commerce. So if you don't know, the Chamber of Commerce is an organization in your local community that's dedicated to helping business owners and other like entities grow and boost the economy. So it's lots of other business owners and maybe like interested parties and stuff like that. Because when one business in the community succeeds, all the other ones succeed too. Think for a second. Let's say you make candles. Maybe some of your posts start to go viral and other people are asking you if you can host classes on candle making. So you start hosting classes and people come from out of town to take them. So they're booking hotels and going to restaurants and supporting other businesses within the community just to go to your candle making shop. And all the other local business owners at the Chamber of Commerce can help you coordinate this and make it work out so that all the businesses benefit and everything goes smoothly. So how do you find them? You just do a quick Google search for Chamber of Commerce and your city's name. So Chamber of Commerce, Boston. Chamber of Commerce, Sacramento. It doesn't even have to be a big city. A lot of smaller towns have them as well. They do lots of things. They offer meals with keynote speakers so everybody can learn some new business tips. They also do grand openings for new businesses in the area. And sometimes they even get the local news involved. They do a lot of great things to help new businesses in the local community thrive. Another great place is online. With technology these days, you can find a focus group for just about anything. And we actually run one. It's called the Stud Stack. It's a private community of makers who run maker businesses. We got people wrapping cars. We got people running CNCs. We've even got a couple web designers in there. We've got an amazing collection of makers who run their own business that are helping each other out in a network, grow their businesses all over the world. We've got a map up there, but we got to get a world map because we got people all, literally all over the world in this group. So just the continental United States is not enough. So there's a saying that everybody has their two cents. Apparently that's what your opinion is worth. But what if somebody has experience doing what you're doing? Isn't their opinion worth a little bit more than the standard two cents? Does 75 cents sound unreasonable for an informed, experienced opinion? I don't know about you, but 75 cents is way cheaper than learning it the hard way and screwing it up on my own. In the stud stack, we have over 100 business owners willing to share their experience and opinions with you. When you subscribe for $75 a month, you get unlimited access to over 100 business owners' professional opinions. That works out to less than 75 cents for each perspective that you're gaining. Ask as many questions as you want. Post videos, post pictures, ask questions on how to optimize your shop, whatever you may need. We also post extra videos. We do big giveaways. And 
We do virtual hangouts. It's a really great time. Only the people who are serious about learning, sharing, and making money are in the community. It's not for everybody. We know there's free groups out there, but sometimes you get what you pay for. If you're interested, there's a link below the like button in the description. Otherwise, you can just go right to studstack.net to jump in. So we also promised to tell you how to deal with contradicting advice. Uh, sometimes you're going to get a couple different people that have got some different opinions and you don't know which one to go with. A lot of times what we choose is when we get advice like that, we pick the person who is doing the thing closer to what we're doing or is operating a business more like we want to operate ours is the person whose advice we're going to take. Now, sometimes it just does come down to a 50-50 choice and it really just matters on what you choose. I mean, it's your business. You get to choose how it grows and changes over time and that's one of the cool things about it. But if you really don't know what to pick, grab a quarter and choose one decision is heads, one is tails. And while that quarter is in the air, your gut is gonna choose one or the other. I mean, how many times have you done this from flipping a coin? You know you want heads or tails to show up. Go with your gut. Choose whichever one that you were hoping for when the coin was in the air. So if you take this advice, you're off to the races. You should be getting a lot of networking opportunities and getting more sales and producing more, streamlining your processes. You really start to grow as a business. But what's next? I mean, you're making sales. How do you get your business to grow up and look like the real deal? How do I make my business attract good talent so that I can hire employees and start to go bigger faster? That's the topic of the next Maker's Money video. So make sure you subscribe and hit the bell to be notified when the video comes out.